I didn't know that it had, uh, it, it, of a fashion, been on ITV Encore before. Yes. So it, I did, didn't cross my radar then. So I sat down to watch it, watched episode one, and then la actually last night caught up with episode two because I knew you were coming on. And then I thought, I know there are six of them. I thought, my God, they're wrapping this up quickly. <laughs> but episodes one and two, that's a full story. That's done. It is, yeah, all done. I mean, there's an arc that goes across the whole of the series, but those first two are one story, and then tonight and tomorrow are one story, and next week are one story. Well, that's okay. quite an American thing to do, isn't it? Sort of... Run yeah, I mean, I suppose it. they kind of do them one by one, so one hour will be a story in the States, but we get the luxury of spreading out over two nights. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so um, because of that ITV Encore, were, there were people thinking, hang on a minute, I've seen this before. I think a lot more people were thinking that than we expected. <laughs> you I think, didn't expect so many no, people to watch it. No, when it aired on Encore initially, I think it got respectable numbers for Encore, but I don't think they were huge, and so when we put it on the main channel, we thought this is going to be... It's going to be new to everyone, and I think we didn't necessarily realise how many people have watched it in the interim, in the years. But you've, you've toned it down a wee bit for, 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 the, for ITV, haven't you, as, as, yeah. opposed to, as opposed to Encore? I mean, that, the, the beginning is dark. The beginning was... I think the beginning was still dark on ITV, but, yeah, it was a little more graphic on Encore. Yeah. He is... Let's explain who he is, because he, he is quite maverick, but there's a, there's a... In a good way, there's an annoyance about him because he's not always actually right, is he? No, and I think that's... Where you see a lot of that in cop shows, generally, that he's, like, doesn't play by the rules and he's, like, a hard-bitten cop. And I think, in the case of this one, him pushing the boundaries actually works against him. It's the stuff that stops him being a good policeman. Mm. That's what was interesting about it for me initially. It was, like, we're going to lull people into a sense of the familiar in the first couple of episodes and then we can unpick it and pull the rug out from under them as the series progresses. You, what was it like shooting on the streets of, uh, streets of London for you? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, there's the, we were shooting not just on the streets of London, but the streets of London at 11pm on a Friday night in Soho. <laughs> so we got a lot of people wandering into shots. I can imagine. Uh, people just deciding, like, you know what, you're in the way. I want to go home. <laughs> I'm not impressed <laughs> with what you're doing. And one guy, one guy uh, walked up to me and just stood in shot, looked at me and said, you're not Richard Madden. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Great. no. I mean, he was right. <laughs> how, did, uh, how did that Fair make point. you feel? Uh, I mean, he was correct. <laughs> like, <laughs> particularly. Because there's not a lot of space for, you know, the sound trucks and the, and the vans. There's and things, not a lot of space it? for anything. You sort of... You have, to, you have to park 25 minutes outside of the centre of the city and then drive in. You don't get to go home all day and you get changed in... Um, pub toilets, strip club toilets, in nice. the case of the final episode, while the workers are getting ready for their evening. Sort of just stepping over thongs. Excuse me, I'm just <laughs> putting my mic back on. <laughs> um, and, yeah, so it was, uh, it was different to other stuff I've shot. Yeah. I mean, you get... Uh, you say you get... That there is a different way of filming in the UK than there is in America, because you do lots of work in America as well. I mean, the main difference is the food. Is it's it? Like, yeah, mainly catering. And what do you prefer? Because I, I mean, I prefer there because of the catering. What in America? <laughs> yeah. Why is um, it better? I mean, well, you go to you go to. Uh, for example, here you'll have. Well, over there you'll have like you go to the, the catering table and there'll be an ice sculptor of like the sculpture of the lead's face with sushi on it, and over here there'll just be like a sink with some biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you see, you yeah. come back here. Yeah, but to you miss those down biscuits. To I miss, you those miss those biscuits. I miss those That's biscuits. That's the thing. Yeah. Uh, you're moving into directing, is that right? I've done a little bit. Yeah, moving in's a bit strong, but I've, I did. <laughs> I did a short this year that was uh, yeah, great. Nice to be in control. Mm. Mm -hmm. Did it consume you? Yeah. Like, for the last four months, it's all I've thought about. In mm -hmm. a way that I haven't done with acting, suddenly it was like, oh, this is... Because you you're in control of everything. You don't have to worry about anything except what you're doing, which is great. This is a short film called The Toll Road, That's yeah? That's right. Oh, when, is it, when is it out? I mean, who knows? We're doing the festival rounds right now, so let's see how that goes. And so how much, how much time do you spend here and, 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 as opposed to uh, the States? We, I bounce back and forth, to be honest. Sort of, it's six months, six months has been how it's worked out. We've sort of nice. alternated. It's just we've gone where the work goes, because my wife's well, American, so we've... Yeah, so is, this is Liz, Liz uh, Kaplan, who's yeah. um, in Mean Girls. If you're a big fan of Mean Girls, then, uh, then yeah. that's what, sort of what yes. she's doing there. Yeah. I did, how, was, how was your first date with, um, with her? <laughs> Yeah, this story has really become something. I, I'm rubbing we're the, just gonna the, make, the sauce. We're just going to make right you now. tell it again. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it wasn't the first date, but we'd been dating a couple of months, and I and I pulled up outside her house in LA, um, and I wanted to have very clean breath because I'm a 
Yeah. And, you know, it's a, a nice gentleman. thing to do on a date, yeah. And um, I, so I had some Listerine in the glove box, as you do, mm. and I gargled and spat into the roadside, and in the shadows, unbeknownst to me, was a cactus. And as I spat, a needle went straight through my eyeball. That is, I mean... But yeah. you carried on. Carried on. There was a bright flash of white light, which Ooh. you don't want. And then I went in to the date and said, I'm trying to play it very cool. You wanted said, that date. Yeah. yeah. I was like, so you never guess what's happened. <laughs> I've got this cactus needle in my eye. <laughs> and she looked in my eye and said, that's awful, what I can see right now. <laughs> and my pupil had begun to leak. No way! What? Yeah, which I didn't know was something that could happen. How turns out, that? turns out it is. And then, obviously, I had to go to, into the whole American healthcare system, which was a whole different thing, because if I'd gone into the NHS, they would have looked at it and said, oh, we'll stitch that up for you now. I'll, I'll just, I'll use my shoelace, whatever <laughs> is fine. But out there, they said, that's four operations. It's like five grand a pop. It's crazy. Yeah. Oh my yeah. Goodness, that was an expensive first date. You were lucky, actually, because uh, thinking about it, I mean, it's a damn good story, but you were actually lucky. Very lucky. Yeah. I got it in, actually got it in the tiny area of the eye I needed to not go blind. Oh 2.5 millimetres or something. Was your breath crazy. fresh? Oh, beautiful. <laughs> that was the best thing about it. That's, that's what's fun. And honestly, yeah, that's the most important <laughs> thing. <laughs> there is nothing that solidifies the beginning of a new relationship more than having to put an eye patch on your new boyfriend's face every <laughs> night before he falls asleep so he doesn't scratch it.